Hey guys, Johnny here, and I am just going to open up Proclaim today and look at it with you real quick, just to kind of go over the features that we use in our church. I'm sure it can do more, but um, it's really not an intimidating software. It's made to be very user-friendly because it's made for the average um, Joe churchgoer guy to to be able to quickly hop in and help with the video video presentations and and all that. So. Anyway, I'm just going to run through a few things and hopefully it's helpful to get over that intimidation hump for any of the, the new users. And maybe, I don't know if the video guys will learn anything. They probably are, are pretty familiar with it at this point. But um, I'm just going to start, I think, on this left column that we see over here. And we've got four different sections to this column, only three of which we actually use. The pre-service pre loop, warm-up, the service and the post service loop, pretty self-explanatory names. Um, obviously the, the first and the last one, these loops, as the name implies, will go through their content and then loop back to the beginning and just repeat. So there, each slide in here is set to auto advance after a certain set number of time. You can see the little previews of how long each slide is gonna be on the screen. And you can change that here. It looks like it gave it a default of seven seconds unless I come in and specify something different. Um, and so there's only a few kinds of content that I use in this section. I'll, I'll go over real quick. The first one is actually called content. Um, so if I wanted to add something, just come up here to add item button at the top of the screen. Mostly the only buttons I use from up here, maybe I should start with file. I'll just start here um, because this is maybe a little bit even more basic, but if I'm trying to open a, a recent file, I'll usually just come here. You can open and then search from past content. Um, but usually what you need is right here in the open recent. And, and a good practice is to come in and see if somebody created a presentation for this coming Sabbath yet or not. Um, usually I'm the only one in it at this point. I wouldn't mind if I wasn't. So if we get more people involved in creating content, it's always good to come and look and see if somebody already created one for this coming week that we'll, we'll all start working on together. But if not, you would come down to duplicate recent, probably grab your most recent church or Sabbath. Oh, looks like I already have it done here. So um, let's say that we're doing this from the beginning. I'm just gonna delete February 12, which is the next Sabbath in our lineup. I would be coming from February 5, and it gives me this warning here. You are editing an old presentation until I come in and I say, I wanna duplicate this. I duplicate last week's and it, it puts it right to the next Saturday and gives it the right date and all that. And now it's success. You're updating the right presentation. It's great. Um, suggested items. I think usually we'll X that don't need to worry about it. I don't, I think I did something to, to ruin the connection there, but actually it's kind of cool because it's connected to our, our Google calendar, which I don't know if you guys even know we, that we have, but um, I'll throw information in the Google calendar and it just, it found, the stuff and started creating content slides for it. I, I updated the content backgrounds a little bit and stuff like that, but I just grabbed them from there. It was kind of, I haven't been doing that. Maybe I'll start doing it more. Um, so what are the kinds of content here? First one, like I said, is just a slide called content. That's what this calendar started out as. And if I create a new one, it's just gonna give me a big blank text box and that's about it. And so now I can use these controls up here to start changing the look of things. Um, there's pre-saved styles over here if you want, and you can create your own text and then you could save it as a new style if, if that's something that's helpful. Um, if I wanted a different text box in here, up, up in the top right, I've got this option to add a text box. And so <clears throat> that one I can grab and I can just start putting different styles on it. it. It became this text box here and to get rid of it, I could click this X and it would go away. Um, if I want to put a new background, which is a lot, a lot of times what I'm doing in a content slide like this, I'll import something that I've made or downloaded on Google or something like that. Or can you can do that by importing it from your hard drive or you can access, um, I guess I just clicked on the wrong one. I clicked Oh, this is no, the same thing I did before the background. I guess the other one that you can import or use browse media for is in a foreground image. So what's the difference? Background image. Let's try importing something. Um, 
Let's see what I got. Uh, image of the Red Sea. So that's a background image, and this text is is always going to be over the top of it. You could also import some image, like I'll do this calendar image, and that now becomes kind of like a floating image on top that I can resize as well. So those things can either be pulled from importing from your computer or from the browse media, which maybe I'll, since I'm touching on that, I'll just touch on that now. I'll go to that now. Another way to, the generic way to access browse media would just be to come here to media and browse media. And this is a cool library of all sorts of really nice looking backgrounds and content. Um, I think we do in our subscription pay for for having access to certain things. There's I think there's higher tiers than what we have. So if you search all, sometimes you won't you'd have to pay for something. But if you search through owned, then it's always going to be content that we have access to. So maybe we have a potluck coming up, and I'm going to just search. Oh, I've got other other search fields going on here. Um, and so now there's all sorts of nice looking content that I can quickly grab. I could apply this as a background to what I was working on, or I could also um, add a new content item that brings in, so here was the background, here's the one I was kind of creating from scratch. I'm just gonna delete that. And here's this fresh one I deleted straight out of the library. And now I can update this a little bit, but it came in with its own um, stylized text and things that m matched and already fit with this background, which is, makes it nice and quick and easy to, to get good looking content sometimes. Um, so that's the main thing you could go is gra go to is content slide and then just modify it as you need. Another one would be an announcement slide. And this one has just a few more fields kind of preset up for you, title and a description and you're going to be using it the same kind of way to add backgrounds or add images or add text if you want. Um, location, contact. Sometimes I put different kinds of information there if I want. This date one, though, is kind of specific to setting a date. And there's different ways you can do it. Say I want a custom end and start time or something like that. And I want to display it in this way or in this way. So that one will kind of automatically set that. And what's cool is when you add the date, I don't get overwhelmed by these signals. I never come over to the signals tab. I'm just going to show you that it's here. It automatically created the signal so that anybody using a Faith Life app in church, which I, I do, I use the Logos Faith Life Logos Bible. And if my Bible's open, I when this is on the screen, I get a notification through my Bible app, uh, you know, about whatever, whatever signal is on the screen at that time. This also goes for on-screen Bible verses. So there's two kinds of on-screen Bible verses that they offer here. One is, um, three, one. is just kind of like a, a normal, blank, clean looking slide. You could very quickly and easily grab a different version if you want, and it'll update that. Um, you can start to get into changing the backgrounds and things like that the exact same way, a few kind of ugly presets here. Um, and then the when I added the verse, it also added a signal. So if I'm, if I'm in church with my Bible app open, um, it pops a signal on my Bible app and I click it and it takes me right to this spot on the Bible. So that's pretty cool. Um, the other kind on screen Bible, you'll, you'll probably remember seeing on screen cause I use this sometimes. So oops. It, it takes a minute here to load, but you can see it just kind of from the preview of the thumbnail just the animation. There's a few different options they give you and you can go between a few different colors within those options. Um, but this will be a little bit more animated, clean looking version. This one's kind of cool. It kind of scrolls down to that section of, of the chapter. So a couple Bible verse options, ways to add scripture to, to your presentation. Um, as I said, we're not going to be using the warm up section so much. That's just for if you have something that is timed out to end at 11. We pretty much time our video out to start at 11. And the way this was added initially was just to come in here and add item and say video. And then add a video and import, you know, something that I downloaded from the Mission 360 website. So this will be a Mission 360 video and it says, you want to add this? And I say, yeah, I'm not going to do it in this case, but 
when when I have one in there, I'll I'll do the same thing and I'll just overwrite our previous video with a new one that way. Um, a welcome slide like this came from the media library, so they've got certain content that is kind of video background, moving background. Yeah, you click this filter, get rid of the potluck filter, and that that gives you all this kind of content that has kind of a moving background. So there's all sorts of this is still loading, but this you can scroll long, long ways. There's a lot of content here that you can pull in and then there'll be different versions of that content, you know, with different welcomes or sermon title slides or announcement versions. And you can always add that as a new custom item. Uh, songs. Songs are very cool, very quick and easy to add, very slick. So the way we would add this initially, and maybe before I even do that, I'll I'll just kind of show you, you know, this is our hymn from last Sabbath, Open My Eyes, had three verses. Those three verses were written out in order here. And so it, you just do a couple, enter a couple times, and uh, it'll create a new slide every time you put a space in between the text. It knows not to add the verse one, verse two, verse three text, but the way that it, it can use these is actually if you check this box and you start typing verse it now lets you choose verse one verse two verse three and now i could i could pick any order i want i could add a blank slide i could add the title slide verse two and now it arranged our slides per you know that that arrangement that i clicked up here so once you have things written in here you know you can write in uh, chorus chorus then bridge bridge and then when i come up here to click on stuff there, there are options now chorus bridge and scroll down and see that it added it created new slides out of that you could change the formatting of this you could change the background of it change the text make it all look pretty um and then it will it'll save it that way and next time you come back to it it'll be ready to go if i modify the text box you know here i'm gonna have to so fix this song later or maybe just do this um it'll it'll modify it it'll just modify anything you do to one slide it'll basically do to all of them so it's a nice quick easy way to keep all your slides ordered and organized and looking looking the same um coming down the line a little bit more here we see that we have a our sermon slides and they're kind of grouped like this the way that you would set that up initially is to come to the bottom of add item and you have import item. I don't know what you're going to do for, for Mac, but for PC and Microsoft, you can import PowerPoint. So it gives you a couple options, convert to images and transfer control to PowerPoint. I have not used the transfer control to PowerPoint. I think the idea there is that it, it comes to this point of a service and it hands it off to PowerPoint automatically somehow. I'm not sure how that handoff goes or how it hands it back. I've just never done it because it just, it's always worked for me and seemed safest just to have it import. It will import your slides as an image. So it really kind of flattens them. You don't get the animations or transitions that you maybe had before. Um, so I just kind of plan accordingly as I'm creating a PowerPoint, but here it has that, you know, kind of grouped in as one item that I can drag around throughout the service. It's this, this is my sermon and you pop it open. It has all the slides from the sermon. Um, so I think that that's most of the left column here down at the bottom. You have all the slides kind of broken out in order in this timeline. And that includes, you know, the, the multiple slides that were in these collapsed sermons. They're not going to be collapsed down here. They're, everything's going to be expanded out in order one slide after another. So that's kind of a nice, easy way to see your timeline. Um, but if you are, the video guy, you're well familiar with the on air button. And I don't have two screens right now, otherwise it would project this to the second screen and just leave me with, with this view. And what's nice is in edit mode, you can edit anything while it's on the screen, while the presentation is going, you don't have to pull the presentation down to, to change things or fix things. And this comes in handy um, for the video guys, as they know, sometimes they have to fix my mistakes on the fly. So they'll be up there like typing in, the right name that I forgot to type in for who's ever doing announcements or something like that. And people will, will look up at one point 
it'll be wrong. They'll look down for a second, look back and it, it's right, you know, cause it, it just gets edited while it's up on the screen. So that's really cool. Um, if you're not needing to edit anything though, you can go to the preview mode and from preview mode, it's basically what you're seeing on, on the big screen. It's, it's maybe not that helpful as this view, but, um, for you video guys, in case you weren't familiar with this up here, you can switch to this tile mode. And now you really have like a good zoomed out view of the whole service. And if somebody's like, Hey, you know, Joe up there, can you give me this certain slide? You can quickly like scroll and see all your slides and be like, Oh yeah, it's right there. Or if you're, if they ask you to click through the music, which I sometimes do, um, here's a way to see every single slide in front of you. And if, if I'm singing it in the wrong order or something like that, you can quickly <laughs> click to the, the slide that matches what we're singing. So maybe that'll be helpful for you. I think that that mostly covers it. You know, you've got your synchronize button up here. It'll kind of automatically do that. But if you ever want to force it to synchronize, it will keep in mind, like if you start working on this during the week, um, there might be more than one of us in the project and that's perfect and that's great. And it's made to do that. Um, but we just need to make sure that we are always working from the same most recent file and that we're synchronizing it and yeah, should be good. I think that's all I got for you guys today. And thanks for watching. Let's see how long did I go? 16 minutes. Oh, man. Okay. Well, thanks for getting through the whole thing. Hope that was helpful and have a great day.